My good friend Taylor from Best Damn EDC challenged me to see who could build the best overland rig this year. So game on, Taylor. It's on, b Let me explain how we got here. About eight months ago, I saw Jeremy's truck EDC video. Today, specifically, we're talking about a vehicle EDC. So all the stuff you would carry in your vehicle that helps you get through the day. As soon as I saw that he had posted a truck EDC video, I knew I wanted to make another one of my own because it had been a long time, but I also kind of wanted to throw down the gauntlet and challenge Jeremy. So I watched the video, finally. And I was a little jealous at first because he has a trail boss and I miss my AT4 basically every single day. But I watched the video and I kept waiting for truck EDC content and he's opening packages and talking about a shotgun and lighting a cigar. Get out of here with that shit, Gary. Get out of here. And then the video ends. I'm like, I wanted some truck content. Where, Where's the truck EDC, Jeremy? And then it hit me. Jeremy doesn't even leave his house. What does he know about truck EDC? So I threw down the gauntlet. We challenged Jeremy. Well, I did in my head. I never told him about it and I never even made the video. That's not to say that I wasn't thinking about it or trying to plan it or even putting stuff on the truck. I just never felt like it was dialed enough to make a truck EDC video. And I also didn't know if I was gonna keep this ZR2 Bison. So I was on the phone with Jeremy one day and I told him about this challenge that he didn't even know about. But by that point, it was no longer a truck EDC challenge. It had turned into a full on apocalypse rig challenge. Let me tell you a little bit about my truck. So this is a 2022 Chevrolet ZR2 Bison. I went with this truck for a number of reasons. It's a naturally aspirated V6, which now all of them are turbo four cylinders. But also because if you're not familiar with the Bison, this is a truck that AEV or American Expedition Vehicles buys from Chevrolet and then outfits and makes it basically turnkey for an off-road rig. You have skid plates front to back, steel bumpers front and back, uh, it's winch ready. This thing is basically ready to go. And I had done stuff to it before now. I put a Paragon bed cover on it, extrusion crossbars from Extrusion Overland, and I put my Desert Armor tent on it. But I knew that was a stopgap because I wasn't sure if I was gonna keep this truck but I also knew that that wasn't something I wanted to keep long-term. I wanted to do something different with it. And as you guys know, I have been kicking around this idea of an overland rig for a while now. I was talking about it with the Tacoma long before this channel existed. I bought the excursion. I tried to do it with AT4, which that one wasn't totally my fault. I did a little bit of dabbling with the mini truck before I blew it up. And then I bought this thing. Um, I'm actually doing it this time. I promise. Maybe. There's no turning back now. I have married myself to this truck because of that thing right there. This is an Alu Cab Canopy Camper. I have wanted something like this for about eight years. I learned about Go Fast Campers back when I had my Tacoma and I wanted one so bad, but I could never justify getting a camper like that. But a friend of mine, Rick Stowe from Blue Ridge Overland Gear talked me into the Canopy Camper from Alu Cab and I am so glad he did. Let me tell you why. The reason I originally wanted a go fast camper is because not only is it like half the weight, the dry weight of this thing, it allows you to continue using your truck as a truck a little bit easier than this one does. Uh, you don't lose your tailgate. Whereas with this one, the tailgate's gone. It replaces your tailgate with a door, which is really sweet. And I'm, I'm glad I have the door now, but with a go fast, it's just your truck bed. It's more like a normal topper that just has a tent built into the top of it and you can load your stuff in, load it out, and it, it just keeps your truck more nimble because it's so much more lightweight and everything kind of stays the same. You're just bolting a topper on. 
this one is sealed to your truck removes the tailgate and it comes as a system when this thing comes as stock as shipped it has lights built in solar hookups on the top it has so much that you can add to it after the fact i mean there are molly panels that i got from gp factor already the gp factor table that i have on the door the stuff that you can add to the audio cab is almost limitless and that's a bit of a problem but also kind of cool <laughs> which is also why i'm really glad i went with this the problem sort of is that when you put this on your truck for the most part it's on your truck you're not going to be taking this thing on and off this is a commitment so my plan for this rig is to keep things fairly simple like i know that this whole thing is a bit overkill for just camping to just to begin with but i see a lot of people do walkthroughs on these rigs especially these canopy campers and they are loaded to the gills they've got stuff strapped everywhere there's a guy that's got bungee cords just stretched in every direction on the door I don't want that the whole point of this thing is simple frictionless camping and i want to apply some of what i've learned from backpacking and just my daily life to this rig so i need something that makes this work and is functional currently i'm using my milwaukee packouts which is what i've used for camping for the last year or so it's a pretty good system they are not perfect they're a little bit too big and heavy for what they offer and i've got to move bins in and out to get to what i need and this system is the best i've had yet but the whole point of this camper is that if it's raining out here i can jump up in there and sit down and get out of the weather the milwaukee packouts kind of take up too much room for that i need like a little bench and just a couple of things because i know i know in my heart of hearts and you guys know it too jeremy is going to load his truck down with every last little gadget he can find at Harbor Freight. Get out of here with that shit, Gary. I promise you that. You know it, I know it. I don't wanna do that. I want this thing to be efficient and simple and minimalist. It's, it's funny because Ricky gives me a lot of crap for how messy and disorganized and cluttered the office is, but the first time he went camping with me, he's like, I've never seen you this organized, right? Like you, you were surprised. I want to keep that kind of the theme of this whole thing simple not overdone not crazy overloaded i want this to be as nimble as it can be with this current setup So I've had this on the truck for about a month and I've not really had a lot of time to do much to it. I've added this table, which is really, really nice and convenient, as well as these two GP Factor Molly panels. There's also one on each of these bigger swing out doors on the sides. Um, and I found, surprisingly, some used Alucab stuff on Facebook Marketplace, which is kind of odd because not many people have these things so i got this molly panel which goes on the outside so there's a water tank that goes behind this panel so this will mount here it won't mount until i have the water tank the water tank will be behind it it's 13 gallons and then you have all these bags for organization i found this and the molly panel on facebook marketplace together for like a third of the price which is really really nice and rare and really that's all i've done to this thing so far just a couple of molly panels and found some parts used but i also found this video from mountain state overland that pointed out that since this is a really low pile carpet it works well with hook and loop so i have my truck first aid here now as well as um, straps for my hammock this is empty just a little tool pouch and these are also empty but i can put my mechanics gloves there because i use these more than just about anything um, the other thing i've added is this pouch here this was a first aid kit but now this is where i keep all my coffee stuff for really quick coffee because that's really what i've done most with this thing so far <laughs> and then directly above your head is just a little quick rig that i put for uh i put together for paper towels that's it for now i've not done much else to this um it, this all came standard this switch panel this is the basic one from gp factor so this is all of these lights here which they do also switch to red 
which is really nice. This is for some lights up in the tent. And then this is for 12 volt power down here. So if I turn this off, this will no longer charge. I'm going to be honest. I don't know what that switch goes to. <laughs> I'm a professional. Uh, and then if you look up here, there are two panels. This is a little hatch. If you push this up, this allows you access into the bed. And this is where you sleep. You can keep all of your bedding in here. You've got more storage built in right there, as well as over on the sides here. It's one of these on both sides. You have like a little map light or a reading light, which is tied to one of these switches down here. And then inside here, which is going to be basically impossible to see, there is USB-C and USB-A ports in here so you can charge your phone. There is one of these on both sides. But yeah, this is a, a ton of sleeping room. And when you're up here, you can also pull this hatch down and you have a full nine feet of sleeping area, which is super, super nice and convenient. And if it were raining, like I talked about, uh, you obviously wouldn't want to be sitting in here like this. The whole point of this system is that this is on gas struts and just lifts all the way up and out of the way. So you can just sit down, have a coffee, how you can pop open the windows, have a cigar if you want in here. I mean, it's, it's roomy. I mean, I'm standing up, I'm 5'10", and there's another three and a half, four feet to the very top. <laughs> I mean, there's so much room in here. It's really nice. I just can't wait until I have something a little more effective than these Milwaukee packouts. But so far, I mean, as it stands, this rig is already really sweet and I'm especially thankful to have it. I've done plenty of rooftop tent camping. I've spent hundreds of nights in a rooftop tent. I've had a trailer system. I've had the tent on top of the excursion on top of the mini truck, which was a mistake. I also had it on this truck before with a rack and a bed cover. I've gone through the gamut of different ways to rooftop tent camp. And it, trust me, I'd rather have a rooftop tent than a ground tent basically any day of the week. But they do kind of get old after a while, putting it up, tearing it down, putting it up, tearing it down, having to put your bedding somewhere else. And the process just, you get kind of tired of it. None of it is as bad as a ground tent. Nothing is as good as a hammock. But if you're going to be on the road, up and down, traveling, this is the way to go. And I've tried to warn Jeremy because he won't listen. I said, learn from my mistakes. Just go all in. And I already know what he's going with. I already know how it's going to turn out, but he's stubborn. He won't listen to anybody. So we're just going to have to kick his ass. The reason I got this is how fast you can tear down camp and set up camp. It's a couple of minutes in the worst conditions. The awning, 30 seconds to put up and take out. The tent, you can roll up to camp, pop your latches, pop it up and climb in and go to bed. It's literally 30 seconds or so. Like it's great. I tried to warn him. I tried to warn him. He won't listen. So I guess the point is uh, there's going to be more videos on this rig because Jeremy has challenged me to an apocalypse challenge, truck challenge, apocalypse truck challenge. And I have to beat him. There's a lot of people that we want to go see out West. And that's one of the reasons I decided to go ahead and invest in this because I plan on spending a lot of time in this truck this year, getting away from the table and doing more EDC content through the things that I want to be doing. So that is, that's where we're headed this year on the road a lot and living in this thing a lot. So go down to the comments and one, tell me what you want to see with this rig, but also tell me who you think is going to win Jeremy or me. And keep in mind, Jeremy's afraid of bugs and he doesn't leave his house. Just saying. Yeah, he's from Florida. <laughs> and, yeah, he's a Florida man. <laughs> also, just a spoiler alert, Jeremy, like you guys need to go tell Jeremy that you don't need a six inch lift and 37s to drive through those shallow little mud puddles in Florida. I ain't scared of no Florida man, okay? We got this in a bag. <laughs>